So we've seen previously that we can use loops to prevent repeating ourselves in our JavaScript code, but there's another feature that we can use that will help prevent us from repeating the same lines of code over and over again. And that feature is functions. So a function is just a set of JavaScript statements that you assign a name to, and then when you want to run that code, you just reference the name that you've given the function, otherwise just known as calling the function, and those lines of code within the function run. So let's go through a really simple example. So I've got two statements here. I'm defining a variable called name and then logging that as a message out in a template literal. So I'm going to put these two lines of code inside a function so that I can run them whenever I like. So you can see we define a function with the function keyword and then the say hi is the identifier, the reference to the function that runs this code. And you can see there's an opening and closing parentheses and I'll come on to a bit more about what that does in just a second. And then everything inside the curly braces is the code that runs when the function gets called. So you'll notice the output on our right hand side of our display has disappeared and that's because although the function's been defined we haven't actually done that calling process to actually run those statements inside of the function. So to call a function you just use the identifier again followed by the opening and closing parentheses. So we can call this function as many times as we like now. But at this point it's not doing much more than what we could achieve with a for loop. So where functions really come into their element is when we provide them with a value which slightly modifies the action that they take and provide a different output. So for example with our small function here we're always going to get the same output with the same message logged to the console. But functions allow us to provide parameters when we define them so that we can pass in different values. So with our function now, you can see I've removed the definition of the name variable and put that inside of the function's parentheses. And this is basically instructing JavaScript to say that the function say hi can accept one value and to store that in the variable called name. And you'll notice we don't need to use the var let or const keyword to define that variable there. But the output on the right hand side is coming up as undefined, so, so name doesn't have any value at the moment. But we can change that by passing in a value when we call our say hi function. So now you can see on the output on the right hand side that each time we call say hi, the value of name gets set to whatever we pass into the calling parentheses. So although this is a really basic example, hopefully you can see the power of using functions and how you can customise the code that runs based on the values that you pass in. There are two other ways of defining functions that I'll show you now, but the way you call a function always remains the same. So another way that you can define a function is to first of all create a variable with the name of the function identifier, and instead of prefixing the identifier with the function keyword, we actually assign this the value of a function. So here you can see we've still got our say hi identifier, but we're actually defining this as a variable and assigning it the value of a function that does the same thing as we had it set up to do before. So this way and the previous way are the kind of traditional older ways of defining functions. And there are some subtleties in these two different ways of defining functions, but we won't go into that here. But it's worth familiarizing yourself with both of these ways as you might see this kind of approach in older JavaScript code or older code bases that you might come across within your work. So the third way to define a function is to use the ES6 arrow function syntax. And that's very similar to using this second approach to defining a function, but we can actually just remove some of the keywords to make the function definition shorter. So the first thing we do is remove the function keyword, and after the parentheses with our argument in there, we put an equals and greater than sign. And you can see the output on the right hand side is coming out exactly as it did before. And because we're only using one argument in our function, we can actually also remove these parentheses too. So some programmers have different approaches, some like to leave the parentheses around there, and some like to make their code as short as possible. So have a try with both approaches and see which suits you. So the reason these ES6 functions are called arrow functions is because the equals and the greater than sign obviously looks a bit like an arrow, and they can sometimes be called fat arrow functions. So another really powerful and commonly used feature of functions is to actually return a value from a function to be used elsewhere in your code. So let's take a look at how that works now. So let's create a function that adds two numbers together. And we'll take in two arguments, uh, num1 and num2, which will represent the two numbers that we're going to add together. And I'll use the arrow syntax to define our function. 
So notice I have to put the parentheses around the arguments because you can only remove them when you only have one argument. So let's add those two numbers together. And if we were to write a console log here now, we would see the result of those two numbers added together. But we want to pass the value back to wherever the add numbers function was called from. And we do that by saying return and then the value that we wish to return. So let's just test the add numbers function out. So here you can see we're calling the add numbers function and passing in two and two, and then the result of that is returned from the function and assigned to the variable called result, which we then log out to the console. So this is massively useful because now when we want to call our add numbers function, we can pass in different arguments and store or use the value that add numbers returns from wherever it's called. So again, this is a really trivial example, but hopefully you can see how useful this will be when you start writing more complicated code. There is just one last thing to know about functions, and that is when you're using an ES6 arrow function and you're performing a simple calculation or a simple operation like we are in our add numbers function, you can actually shorten the code and remove the return statement by using something called an implicit return. So really, we don't need to store the result of the calculation in the variable total. We could just return that calculation on this line here, which means we can then get rid of this line here. And when you end up with a function like this with an ES6 arrow function, you can actually remove the return keyword as long as you've removed the curly braces as well. So again, this might be down to your style and your personal preference of how you can easily read the functions that you define. But this sort of abbreviation and simplicity is encouraged by a lot of JavaScript style guides. So it's probably best practice to take this approach where you can. So we've covered a lot about functions in this lesson, but in the next lesson, we'll look at something called anonymous functions.